ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونتوب اليه ونشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له وان محمدا رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عبده ورسوله بلغ الرساله وادى الامانه ونسها العمه الامه حتى اتاه اليقين وبعد Ahabatifillah, I want us to do a brief study of the book, The Three Fundamentals, <coughs> Asulu Falatha. It's a book by Imam Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, Rahimahullah Ta'ala. And without going into much of his history, I want us to get into the book. And I just want to mention before we begin. This is a very important book in Tawheed about the monotheism or oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, and it covers the three important questions of the grave that all people will be asked. And that is, who is your Lord? And what is your religion? And who is your prophet? And... So those are the questions of the grave, and that is what primarily this treatise is about. And something else I want to mention about Imam Ibn Abdul Wahhab, Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahhab, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, is that his books, like Kitab al-Tawheed, Kashf Shubahat, Asul al-Falatha, Kuwait al-Arba, Asul al-Sitta, and his other books, that they were written with a very in a very simple form to emphasize especially Tawheed al ibadah the Tawheed of worship and that the way he wrote a lot of times it was very strong with adilla with evidence from the Quran and the Sunnah meaning that he would write and try not to write a lot but he would write for example in Kitab al-Tawheed he'll say Bab Qawlillahi Ta'ala he'll say the chapter uh, of the statement of Allah and he'll mention an ayat and then he'll mention other ayat and then he will mention maybe hadith for that for that chapter title and then he might mention some of his own benefits that you can gain from that and then go to the next chapter so very simple and very trying to keep the way in which the salaf used to write books and the way they used to their books their early books were based on strong evidence from the quran and the sunnah with little statements from themselves the shaykh began his treaties he said he said no as it says here he said you have to know the four things and he said, firstly, al-ula al-ilm. He said, the first thing is knowledge. And then he said, He said, and firstly, it is Allah the, uh, the exalted. Knowing Allah the uh, exalted. The recognition or the knowledge of his prophet. I don't like the way the translator said the recognition, but it would be better to say, and knowledge of his prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and knowledge of his true religion islam with the textual evidences he says by the perception of the evidences this is some complex statements that really doesn't exactly make sense in english but jazallah khairan to the translator anyway so what this means he said he said that you have to know four issues how many issues four issues he said, the first thing is Allah, is knowing Allah. Uh, and then, and the, the knowledge of uh, the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and the knowledge of his religion, Islam in general, from the Quran and the Sunnah. Knowledge of Allah is the highest level of knowledge you could have. Knowledge of Tawheed. And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions all throughout the Quran the importance of Tawheed and, and knowledge of Him subhanahu wa ta'ala and knowledge of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al-Kareem, 
I have not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshipping me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala here is emphasizing that we have to have uh, that, that we have to know our purpose. The only way we can know our purpose is by knowledge. And what is the purpose? Our purpose is to worship Allah alone. All of that is based on knowledge. This goes back to the statement of what Imam uh, Muhammad Ibn Abdul Wahhab rahimahullah ta'ala said. And he said, firstly, Allah the, uh, is knowing Allah the uh, uh, exalted or the almighty. And knowing Allah, part of, a know, uh, of knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is knowing Tawheed. Or that is knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, is knowing Tawheed. Knowing the categories of Tawheed as the ulama have taken from the Quran and the Sunnah these concepts of Islamic monotheism. When we say that we worship Allah alone, this means that we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. All our worship goes to Allah. And that's called Tawheed al uluhiya or Tawheed al ibadah All the worship goes to Allah. That's a part of knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Also knowing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by His divine names and attributes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has divine names and attributes. Lahu asma al husna For Him is the divine names. So that is called Tawheed uh, al asmai wa Sifat or Tawheed the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's divine names and attributes. And the third category is Tawheed al rububiyyah meaning the Lordship of Allah. So that means there are three categories of Tawheed that we talk about. Those three categories are Tawheed al rububiyyah meaning the Lordship of Allah. Tawheed al uluhiyah meaning that all worship goes to who? To Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That means when we pray, we pray to who? When we supplicate, we supplicate to who? When we make hajj, we make hajj for who? We make tawaf around the Kaaba, we make tawaf around the Kaaba for who? We make it for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. All of that is ibadah. The ibadah goes to Allah. That's why they say tawheed al-ibadah or tawheed al And the last category is tawheed al-asma'i wa sifat. Meaning Tawheed of the divine names and attributes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that Allah is Ar Rahman, the most merciful, Ar Rahim, the most beneficent, Al Khalik, the creator of everything, uh, Ar Razak, the provider and sustainer of everything. Those are a part of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's sifat and his divine names. Those are his names and his characteristics, meaning that he possesses those characteristics. Uh, just given a, so that gives us a, a general understanding. That's what we need to know about those things. So that's why the Imam he said first you have to know these four issues. Al ula al ilm huwa ma'rifat Allah. The first thing is knowing Allah, and that means that knowing the Tawheed. And then he said the recognition of the Prophet or knowledge of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. That means you need to know something about the Sirah of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and you need to know his ha hadith. You know, know something from the hadith. Because the, in order for have our worship accepted, we have two conditions have to be met. They have to be in accordance with, they have to have uh, sincerity to Allah, and they have to follow what? If you pray, you have to pray only to Allah, and you have to follow whose prayer? Who, who showed us how to pray? The Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So that means it's in accordance with the Sunnah. So that's why we have to know the Sunnah. We have to know... Uh, uh, something about the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu so we know how to worship Allah properly. So we don't wa worship Allah based on our, our own desires and our own opinions and the views and opinions of this shaykh or this imam, but rather we do it based on the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu So that's why we have to know his Prophet Sallallahu And then we know the religion of Islam in general by its evidences. Where did the evidences for the, the, the religion for Islam come from? From what? How do we know how to worship Allah? Where, where do we find that, that information from? Where do we get the evidences? How do we know? 
from the Shaykh, from the Prophet so from the Quran and the Sunnah. The evidences in Islam are from the Quran, they're from the Sunnah of the Prophet and they're from what the Sahaba what they agreed upon, what they had consensus upon. That's what we call evidences in Islam. And then there's also something else called tayas or analogy, and that's something we won't really discuss. But we just want to know our, our basic evidences for how we practice Islam. It comes from the Quran and the Sunnah. And the Prophet ﷺ said, Taraktukum ala bayda laylaha kan nahariha la yuzig anha illa halak. He said, I left you on the clear things. The night. Uh, that which the night is like the day and the day is like the night and no one leaves it except they're destroyed and then he said Kitab Allah wa sunnati the Quran meaning the book of Allah the speech of Allah and my sunnah letting us know that the Quran and the sunnah is where we get our evidences for Islam that's how we understand how to practice Islam then the Imam said and the second thing secondly to act upon that knowledge and thirdly, to call people to Allah, to call people to make da'wah. And fourthly, to be patient, he said, to tolerate mischief reflected on oneself by this call. Meaning that you are patient with the harm that comes when you make da'wah. When you make da'wah, calling to Allah, sometimes people won't listen to you. Sometimes people will hate you. Sometimes people will fight you. Sometimes people will kill you. Sometimes people will talk about you and say bad things about you. This is just the nature. It's the way it is. When people call to good, there's always going to be people and the shaitan's going to try to call to evil and try to make the people go away from that person or try to make the people harm that person. That's the way. And that's why all the prophets, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, they all were being harmed and rejected by their people. You know, their people didn't listen to them. Nuh, alayhi salatu wasalam. His people, they didn't listen to him. Uh, many of the prophets, alayhim afdal salatu wasalam, Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, what was he? He was thrown in the fire. How many? Uh, the Prophet ﷺ was rejected. His people in Taif, they threw rocks at him and busted his, some of his teeth. Blood was out the Prophet ﷺ's mouth. So all the prophets, they were harmed for doing da'wah. Because all of them, all the prophets, Jesus, والسلام, all the prophets, والسلام, they called to the same thing from Adam والسلام, to the Prophet Muhammad, والسلام, they all called to Tawheed, to the worship of Allah alone. And this is why Allah says, لَقَدْ بَعَثْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةِ رَسُولٍ إِنْ نَعْبُدُ اللَّهُ وَجْتَنِبُوا تَعْبُودٍ We sent to every nation a messenger to worship Allah alone and stay away from those things worship besides him. That was what they all came with the same purpose. What did they come with the purpose to? To call to Tawheed. To call to Tawheed, what we're talking about. And to stay away from Shirk and the people of Shirk. And those things which are worshipped besides Allah. To stay away from statues. To stay away from jinn. To stay away from shayateen. To stay away from evil people. All those things which, which are worshipped besides Allah. The prophets, alayhim after salatu salam, rejected them. They rejected them. And that's why their people, the people of those prophets, alayhim after salatu salam, they rejected those prophets. Because they called them away from the shirk. The prophets didn't accept shirk. Because Allah doesn't accept shirk. So we'll talk more in detail next time about those four things. We'll keep it very short. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.